Bobby Gearhart is one of the most experienced veterans in the ARCA series, especially here at Daytona. He has five wins. Last year, he was white knuckling it around the racetrack. This year, he has a much more difficult setup. He said he wants to keep his car stiff and have a more comfortable ride. And he's starting eighth today for Bobby Gearhart. Let's head over to Jim Trado. And Wendy, Fred Kimmel has been in this race since 1992. He's a nine time champion, but he's over at the Daytona Motor Speedway. Daytona International Speedway has never been the track that he's had great success at. This car race to Talladega and with his son last year here at Daytona. Also a driver to keep your eye on, Bill Baird in the 52 machine. He is 60 years of age. If he was to win today and back up those top three finishes at Daytona and Talladega with this race car, he'll become the oldest race winner in RP history. Green flag in the air. We're underway with the 2010 season. James Busher was on the inside of row number one in that number 51, and he's first to go into turn one. Yeah, Joey Coulter jumps in behind him in the 16 car. See Danica on the outside. They're worried about two wide, 23 wide. Be interesting to see what Danica decides to do here. If she tries to stay up here in this lead gra draft or if she kind of finds her way to maybe a little safer spot. There's Danica right there following Patrick Shelter. That was one of the drivers they talked about that she was going to be very comfortable driving around. Frank Kimmel was another one of those drivers. And he's right behind Danica in that number 44. Patrick Shelter driving the camouflage number 60. These cars are just they're a little bit evil on the first couple laps. Got a little bit of a lower air pressure. Got to wait for those pressures to come up a little bit to get really comfortable. And remember the final practice that they were going to do all their drafting yesterday was rained out. So most of these drivers have not done any drafting at all since the test. Some of them not even there. Yeah, and right now with all these cars right here all bunched up, this is when the wake turbulence and all the air coming off the other cars is going to affect your car the most. You saw that monster Toyota right there, Ricky Carmichael jumping around in the corner. Frank Kimmel riding along with him in the number 44 car. We got a glimpse of Danica just in front. Jenica's strategy was to stay on the yellow line. Yeah, every lap I saw her race uh, or practice uh, here yesterday and the day before, uh, she never she never got off of that yellow line. I mean, she had those left tires on the line the whole time. How difficult is that to see? I'm seeing a glare through the windshield as they come out of turn four. Not too bad right now. You just start to race windshields clean, but as that windshield gets kind of dirty and pecked up, coming off of four, sometimes there's a little blind spot for a second. And remember, not many pit stops. If these guys go green a long time, they can go, guys and ladies, right. they can go, you know, at least 55 laps. So it's not like they're going to get an opportunity to do tear offs all the time. Over halfway of this race, since it's only an 80 lap race, it's a sprint. Yeah, but you know what I like already, and it's, it's great for Danica is they're already single file and now this will give her a chance to kind of relax a little bit get comfortable with the car and be able to give Tony Jr. some feedback here very shortly so uh, I like the way things are going for her right now the field has spread out James Busher out front Joey Coulter in the 16 he moved up a spot Mikey Kyle dropped back one to third Brian Silas holds on to fourth and Nelson PK another name we haven't talked a lot about but up into the top five now yeah, Formula One driver great driver uh, making his start here today. Got a lot of rookies in the field with a good experience. You know, I talked to Nelson P. Gay Jr. just before the race started, and he's been under the weather. He actually took some IV at the infield care center, and he didn't come down here for the test, Gerald. He has never tested, never drafted in one of these cars. Yeah, you know what? I'm watching Danica's eyes, and she's not looking around. She is focused on that yellow line. That's all she's looking at right now. She never even looked behind her. Watch. She's not using the mirrors or anything else. She is concentrating on staying on that yellow line. She's probably already moved the steering wheel more in this race than she does in a 500 mile race in Indianapolis. Yeah, that's something that uh, some of these uh, drivers that come from Indy had to get used to. You got to crank on these cars. Most Indy car drivers want it to drive like a go kart. And you just can't do that in a big heavy stock car like this. You got to crank that steering wheel. And that's one of the reasons she said everything was so different from what she's used to. The movement of the cars moving around side to side up and down. She's not used to that feeling. Still single file for about the top 10 even back to 15. James Busher held on to the top spot after starting on the pole. Joey Coulter was able to move up a spot into second. Mikey Kyle dropped back to third. 
How about Nelson Piquet Jr. right now running in the fifth spot? Again, never drafted, never been in a stock car before. He did a couple truck series tests. He's actually going to run the Camping World Truck Series race next week for Red Horse Racing. First time, first race in a stock car running in the top five right now. You've got to admit, Eddie Sharp's got some pretty nice cars. Yeah. And uh, if you're going to get in a car for the first time, that would be the, that would be the team I'd want to go with. Fairly calm for the first five and a half laps from Daytona International Speedway. A lot of drivers trying that strategy of staying right on the yellow line. Yeah, of course, that means it's get, you can't get past on the left if you're on the yellow line. So, uh, you know, it takes a little bit of that having to watch somebody behind you where they're going to go. You know, they're going to go outside. And if they have help. I mean, one car probably is not going to pass whoa, a whoa, pack. Oh, oh, Shelter oh, sideways. Oh. Big time sideways. Shelter up to the high side of the track. We see Ricky Carmichael Ooh. up through the middle as well. That was a nice My save. My goodness, that thing got loose. Not sure why. It just looked like the car just kind of turned sideways with him, but great job of saving it. Looked like he was by himself. Let's see if we can take a look at what happened to Patrick and what caused him to get sideways. You see him. Right behind that well, 55 Phil, car. Phil, don't mean it, it, there's a tail. You got a big win down the back straightaway. And if it's going to affect these cars, it's going to affect them getting into turn three. I think he just was running really fast right there, and the car just got. Oh, loose. problems on the racetrack. The 52. Bill Baird. Steve oh, more problems. Cars coming in. We've got accidents on the racetrack. That looks like Leilani Munter right there. Leilani Munter involved. Numerous cars involved in this one. Coming out of turn number two, the problems started in two, and they continue on to the start of the backstretch. Unbelievable. Boy, the that that many is cars blocked right there. Unbelievable that many cars would get in that wreck. Six cars stopped right there on the racetrack. Look at that. Bill Steve, Baird in the 52. That's Steve Blackburn, the car closest to us. The 90 of Lilani Munter, like you mentioned earlier. That's Milka Duna in the 90. Oh, Milka Duna in yeah. the 90, excuse me. See, Bill Baird, the 52 car. He's just, sideways. Just gets sideways and tries to catch it. Catches it one time, just can't, just can't get a hold of it and takes Steve Blackbird up to the outside wall. Obviously, these banks are self-cleaning. They're going to come down the hill. There's Tim George in the 31. It looks like he may have avoided it. And after they come down the racetrack, then other cars thinking they were going to clear it get into this as well. It just always amazes me that, uh, you know, here's our big wreck and cars are so far back, but they continue to pile in here. Watch, here comes a bunch of other cars that just did not slow down. Here's real time right here. You see Bill Barrett, he gets sideways and takes Steve Blackburn hard on the outside wall. And again, they're going to come on down the hill. And there's so much smoke there too, Daryl. And you see a lot of guys trying to take evasive action. You know, Phil, they always told us that here come some other cars that just are just just can't get slowed down. They always told us in the driver's meetings, if you get loose, crank it left and lock it down. Yeah, that's a good view right there of all that smoke, Daryl. So all these drivers coming in here, even though they were trying to slow down, realize these cars are just about just about stopped and they were trying to slow down from 180 miles an hour. Which Jarvis in the zero sliding by our cameras. Chad Hackenbrack. And the number 58 also involved in this incident. Well, we had about uh, immediately to him. 10 cars back there, you think? There were six stopped on the racetrack on the backside, but there were numerous cars with minor damage that were yeah, Here's one right away. here on pit road now. Hal Martin, the 17 car with some damage. The 14 sneaked through, but had a little bit of damage as well from Chase Mattioli. Yeah, he's down here on pit road. He's got problems. Looks like Russ Duggar in the 12 car. I saw the one of the crew guys say, no, nope, it's all over. Yeah. So they'll pull that car behind the wall. The first big one takes place at Daytona. We'll be right back.